frogs and a lily pond. One decided to jump. How many were left? The answer is three. Deciding to jump is not jumping. It's like if I ask you to please stand, or rather, please try to stand. Some of you would catch on and try. That's not the same thing as standing. I didn't say stand. I said try to stand. In my situation, I was committed to finding a way to have, to have young people become responsible and want to put forth effort in their learning. I was committed to it. I was going to find a way how to, did it, how to do it, and of course I have, and now the program is used around the world. My point here is, you either commit yourself to do it, or you don't commit yourself to do it. As Henry Ford said earlier, as you saw, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Either way, you are right. If you want to use this program and truly enjoy the joy that teaching has to offer, you will work with kids using authority, but without coercion. And you will empower them, as this entire program does. Now, some of you are mandated to use rewards because this behavioristic system of positive behavioral intervention and supports is being used really around the country. From my perspective, it's the old Skinnerian approach. Catch them doing something right and then reinforcing it. This program is based totally on intrinsic internal motivation to have the youngsters do what you would want them to do. But let's assume you are in a school and you really want to use the discipline without stress and at the same time you're mandated to use PBIS. Here's how you can do both at the same time. There is nothing in the legislature or the legislation that, that mandates the teacher must be the person who does the reward giving. Have the kids do it. Now what's going to happen is when the kids start reinforcing, they're going to realize how unfair and unjust it is. I learned this years ago when my brother consulted with me and said his daughter, my niece, did a project, everything that the teacher wanted, but didn't get the reward. She did everything that was requested but felt, to use Alfie Cohen's term, punished by rewards. If your students are accustomed to receiving rewards, don't stop this procedure. It would be too upsetting. However, after introducing the levels, regularly refer to the difference in motivation between level C and level D. Have the kids understand the difference between external motivation level C and internal motivation level D. Then in a class meeting, ask the students if they believe that they need to continue to be rewarded now that they're mature enough so that they can do what is right without getting some external reward. Give them a choice. Notice how I phrase it. For those of you who believe you need to continue getting rewarded for doing what is right, raise your hands and we will make a record of it. By the way, this presentation only covers chapter 1 and 3 in the book Discipline Without Stress, Punishments or Rewards. Chapter 2 on motivating, chapter 4 on promoting learning, chapter 5 on teaching, and chapter 6 on parenting are not in this program. If you are having any problem with your class, holding classroom meetings is a wonderful technique to use. Pages 138 to 150 in the education book shares with you everything you would ever need to know about conducting classroom meetings. There is simply too much in the education book to cover in one seminar. If you do not have the education book, since you have subscribed to the seminar, you can purchase the book at a 50% incentive. This applies only to the hardcover book, 
of the art hardcover edition of the book, not to the e-book. Link to the special offers at the store on marvinmarshall.com to receive the special offer.